plus A stands for theory and application. Really, we have a very technical approach in, in our product and a scientific approach. Uh, T plus A has been founded by our owner, Sigi, Sigi Amft, in 1978. And he's still running the company today. So it's a family-owned business. Uh, Sigi's son, Conradin, joined the company in the meantime and will carry on, you know, in, into the next uh, generation. My name is Oliver John and uh, I'm here with the company T plus A. T plus A was founded as a loudspeaker company, uh, but over the years got more and more into electronics. And since recently, we also do headphones. So basically you can really get, you know, good speakers, good electronics, good headphones all from, from one company. So thank you, Mr. Oliver, for spending time and to do this interview with us. So my first question for T plus A is, T plus A Electroacoustic is always renowned for their electronics, like their digital source and amplification, was very well known for the audiophile and music lover as well. But in recent years, we see a huge surge in products like speaker, like headphones, and only one speaker as well. So is it indicative of the new direction for T plus A ecosystem, or is it simple bring other components to the level of the electronics? Yeah. Well, you know, if you look at the history of T plus A, that the company was started in 1978, and uh, in, in recent years, people know us for being a good electronics manufacturer, but actually T plus A started out as a loudspeaker company. So in the 1980s, majority of business was done with uh, loudspeakers and uh, only by the late 80s uh, you know we started to go into the electronics market and then put more and more emphasis on electronics and I think what you see right now is really that we are uh, going back to our roots uh, because I would dare to say that you know, for many years the focus has been only on electronics but uh, we, we thought like, wait a minute, we started as a speaker company. We've, we've had great speakers in, in, in the 1980s, you know, very famous ones, the Transmission Line Criterion Series, which started in 1982, which sales was a huge success, also in, in mainly in the German market. And uh, again, we came back to that thing and said, hey, you know, electronics are pretty good now. We've got good day converters, you know, the amplifiers, the state of the art, so everything is great. Let's, let's look into speakers again. And uh, this is the reason why we launched our Solitaire series uh, at, uh, early last year. On the other hand, uh, you know, having that uh, capabilities in, in speaker building, because making a loudspeaker or making a headphone, I mean, the basic technologies is very similar. And this is also what led us to looking into the headphone market and telling a funny story. Uh, you know, when, when my boss Siggy uh, or myself, uh, we, we talk about how can we improve our sound, uh, we think like, okay, better speakers, you know, better amplifier, better source, better DAC, whatever. Uh, but Siggy's son, who joined the company a few years back, and he's a young guy, he says, okay, if I want better sound, I want better headphones. And this is really where we kicked off uh, and, and came to the idea, maybe we should look into headphones so we can also, you know, cater for these uh, younger people, make them aware of the brand T plus A. And when these younger people become older, then eventually maybe, okay, maybe then they move from the headphones and buy a real uh, hi-fi system. But that really, you know, is, is the idea behind uh, the things we're doing at the moment. A very interesting part that you talk about, because also Ziggy and Ziggy Sons is also indicative of like T plus A is a family business owned, very true to the original, right? Yes, yes. And uh, I've joined the company nine years ago. For me, it was really important. I always, I always want to work in, in a family business. And uh, because really that might seem old fashioned, but the, the point is that we really be looking into the product and, and we're trying to make a no nonsense product, you know, no, no bullshit and really do it uh, very well engineered, 
as you know, made in Germany should, should be. And, and this is really what, what is done at T plus A. You know, in many bigger companies, you're just finding cost cutting and, and trying to hit certain price points, but then also the quality suffering. Uh, but this is not in T plus A. So we really, when we look into a product, we say, okay, just let's use the best. And in the end, we see what the price will be. But we never try to design something to hit a certain price point. Yes. So I want to ask you a little bit, move back to the speaker. So because when I see the new products from mm -hmm. T plus A, is the latest one is Criterion S230, which is a very interesting product that still used a transmission line cabinet with a new with a T plus A driver and also the technology from the high end Talis and Solitaire. I was very which bring very interesting part is each of the line of speaker itself have their different philosophy. For example, the Solitaire have the line source and magnetostatic planner tweeter. The Talis is the aluminum cabinets and the um, Criterion is the transmission line. So which to each of their own, they have their different philosophy. Can you further elaborate on that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think with the, the speakers, you know, we're aiming at, at different target groups. So maybe if we start with the Talis S300, uh, Talis also is a long-standing name in the T plus A history and always stood for kind of slim, elegant speakers in, in aluminum cabinets. And the S300, uh, really the idea was uh, that to make a, a very good performance speaker but still in a reasonable size and, and not being too big. So especially in Europe or in Germany it's, it's much appreciated because you know we are joking in Germany uh, about the fact that uh, if you want to get a system in your living room you always have to look at the female impedance, so basically the resistance of the wife yes. against the loudspeaker. <laughs> And, uh, you know, with a slim, small speaker, it's easier to get that into your living room as if you come up with a big speaker, your wife said, no, yeah, you can have that, but maybe in the basement, but <laughs> not in our living room. Yeah. So that the, really the idea of the Talis was to have a, a slim, elegant speaker, and, and, but still trying to get the best performance out of it. And I think we've, we've done pretty well with, with this product. Uh, when you're looking at the, the Criterion series, I would say this is kind of one step up so from, from, from the Talis. So this is for the people who say, okay, I want more performance, but I still don't want to break the bank, like if you buy it for the Solitaires. So the idea was really to have a, a good performing speaker. But again, if you, for example, look at the size of the new uh, Criterion S300, um, it's similar size than, than the Talis speaker, maybe slightly yes. wider, a slight, little bit taller, but much, much deeper because we just need that that uh, room for the transmission line design. And this is also what, what actually costs quite a lot of money because the cabinets are quite sophisticated, quite complicated to make. See, or the new Criterion series basically incorporates that, that transmission line concept we've done since the 1980s with you know really good bass response um, and, and also trying to get some of the technologies from the Solitaire series. So you know the, the arrangement of, of mid-range drivers and the tweeter is similar to what we do in, in the S430 yes. in the Solitaire uh, series and uh, bring it now to the Criterion series at a much more affordable price. And then again, the, the next step up is, is the Solitaire series where we have two, let's say, sound design philosophies. Um, if we look at the big ones, the bigger models like the 540 and 530, uh, these feature our like the proprietary tweeter, yes. so it's called the Mac 850, yes. 850 standing for 850 millimeters uh, height, yes. and uh, using also um, an array of, of mid-range drivers, and using that that principle uh, really gives you a very focused sound dispersion. So basically, that we call it cylindrical wave, but really you you're limiting. Uh, the vertical dispersion and it's really going straight forward and you can feel that when you sit down and listen to the speaker you're like it's like a big headphone you sit in the sound it's like wow as soon as you stand up 40 percent is gone because of the directivity pattern of that speaker so the advantage really is that uh, that speaker gives you a lot of direct sound and uh, less of of the room influence so because you have hardly any reflections from the ceiling or from the floor and i think this is a great benefit especially if, if you're don't have a 100% acoustically treated room, the speaker will still perform very well. And the smaller model in the Solitaire series, the S430, 
uh, features the concept what we call symmetric directivity. So two mid-range drivers, one, one tweet in the middle, which is similar to, to the other concept, but, but not as narrow. So it still gives yes. a little uh, a wider dispersion. I mean, also here you can be joking that the big speakers, they are like for the lonely audiophile, you know, who's sitting in his sweet spot and it's perfect. And the 430, you can still have somebody sitting next to you, or maybe you can still sit up, uh, stand up and you still hear uh, a reasonable sound. But short words, roughly, uh, what we are trying to achieve with that uh, speaker concept. Thank you so much. Especially for T plus A, you guys have all of it, like from the speaker itself, for digital realms, is like very advanced. And also the amplification as well. So that brings me to the question that, why don't you guys uh, introduce more high-end wireless or active speaker? For example, the Carousel, which is a huge success. We review it and it sounds so great from a one box system. So I was wondering why don't you guys introduce more like a wireless speaker because you have like digital from T plus A very well known, amplification very good and also the speaker itself is great. So why not combine yeah, it all? Yeah. Uh, again, I think one, one of the strong points of T plus A is that we've got all these resources in house. So we've got quite a big R&D department of, of I think 12, 12 or 13 engineers. We have, you know, on, on the mechanical side, on, on you know, PC boards, uh, layouts, and, and also software. I mean, in the old days when we did electronics, or, you know, you only had to do PC boards and how, what components to use. Uh, these days, the majority of what we do is software. <laughs> it's becoming more and more complicated and, and requires more and more uh, resources. But what you mentioned, I think, like, a, a, let's say, wireless speaker is, is something we already thought about. Uh, but it's, at the moment, it's still an idea. But, but not a plan yet. The Caruso, again, was like a first step because we really uh, tried to come up with a, let's say, a more convenient product for, let's say, non-audiophiles who still want to enjoy a good sound and who still don't want to put any many speakers and cables in their room. And for that purpose, it works absolutely well. And uh, I've, I've had many people seeing the Caruso and say, oh, this is quite expensive. And I say, wait a moment. And you turn it on and let them listen to it. And I say, okay, <laughs> it's not so expensive anymore. Um, but I think with the uh, resources and technology we have there, I, I can imagine that it, it would be pretty easy for us to do, you know, maybe two powered speakers and then just connect by phone and let music play. But uh, I think it is, will pr probably be something more of a distant future. Mm -hmm.